Hi all. So now we're going to look at solving equations by factor. I need to preface this with a comment. If you don't know how to factor at this point, I'm totally going with glass half empty approach and say, you're toast. Okay, I'm not kidding. Okay, uh, If you don't know how to factor by this point, or you're very weak at factoring, you are going to die in this section. And from here on out in the, in the intermediate algebra course. So back up. Watch previous videos that I've created about factoring. I've done a lot of them now. And get good at factoring, okay? Get a lot quicker at factoring. Understand the process of factoring because from here on out, that's all we're doing. And factoring is just a small piece of a bigger puzzle. So if you're weak on factoring, I can't tell you how many times we've exited the factoring unit and moved on into solving or worked with simplifying rational expressions and so on where students who aren't very good at factoring can't understand why they're failing from this point on in the course. And that's why they just can't factor. Just like multiplying, you know, if you don't know how to multiply your multiplication tables, you wonder why you're dying in all your math from there on out. It's the same idea. All right, so having said that, um, let's take a look at something here. It's called a zero product property. Given A and B are belong to real numbers, okay? So don't worry about the fancy word here. I'm just too lazy to write real numbers. Um, if a times b equals 0, then either the a is equal to 0. Who cares what b is, right? 0 times b would be 0. Or the b equals 0. Who cares what a is? The 0 times the a would be 0. So we're going to use that idea as we solve here. The key being one side needs to be a 0. Now, I've already got that on this first problem. We're going to solve x minus 3 times factor x minus 3 times a factor x plus 5 equals 0. It's already factored for us, so that's kind of nice. So what you do is you break it up like this. Either the x minus 3 is equal to 0 or the y x plus 5 equals 0. We've got to solve them both. This guy's going to have two solutions as it finds out. So we'll add 3 to both sides on this guy. So x equals 3 will be one solution. And over here, we'll subtract a 5 to both sides. So x equals a negative 5 is the other solution. And that one's done. Okay. Now let's look at this next one. Um, this one's going to be harder. 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equals 0. It is not factored. I need to factor it. So if you've been watching my videos, if you're my online students, hopefully you have been. Factors, so I'm going to do the fast factoring approach. Okay, first of all, greatest common factor, don't have one, so good there. So I'll do the fast factoring where I take the 3, take the factors of 3, which is 3 and 1, make my x, and then I'm going to take factors of 2, which is 2 and 1, and I need to get up here to 5, so that means I'm going to put the 2 down here and the 1 up here, and I'm going to make the 1 negative. Okay, so I'm thinking in, in advance here of what's going to happen. 3 times 2 is going to be a 6, which is close to this 5 here. 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. And when I add these two together, I get a positive 5. And that's the reason I made the 1 negative and not the 2. If the 2 was negative, that would have given me a negative 6 and a positive 1, or a negative 5 there. And this 5 needs to match up to this 5, right? Again, if you've been watching my factory videos, you know all this already, hopefully. So my factors are going to be 3x minus 1 and x plus 2 equals 0. So this goes back to my comment at the beginning of this video. If you don't know how to factor by this point, you're toast. And here's a classic example as to why. So let's take our 3x minus 1 equals 0. And then our x plus 2 equals 0. And hopefully you've figured this out already. You could probably pick out your answers from this step, rather than showing these last couple steps I'm going to show, um, I'll explain how in a minute. But on this one, we're going to add a 1 to both sides. So 3x equals 1. I'll divide by 3. So one of my answers is x equals 1 third. And the other answer, I'll subtract a 2 to both sides. x equals negative 2. Like I said a second ago, from this step, you can actually pick out your answer. You know, it's going to be opposite of that sign. So if you've got x plus 2, your answer is x equals a negative 2. 
And over here, I don't know if you picked up on this yet, but the number not next to the variable is going to be in the numerator. Just change the sign. And the number next to the variable is in the denominator. Okay, so that's kind of a fast way a lot of students pick up on as they solve these things. All right, let's take a look at this last one over here. A little bit harder. So this video is getting a little long. I apologize. Uh, x times the quantity of 5x minus 7 equals negative 2. So you could add a 2 to both sides first, but I suspect a lot of people are going to want to distribute first, which is fine. You can do either one. So we've got 5x squared minus 7x equals negative 2, or 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0. Then you want to go ahead and factor. Factors of 5, there's only one option, 5 and 1. Factors of 2, there's only one option there. That one's going to be... 2 and 1. They both need to be negative because my middle term has a negative coefficient in there and my last term is positive. So negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2, but it needs to be, uh, they both need to be negative to come to this negative. So 5 times negative 1 is a negative 5, 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2. It'll add up to be a negative 7, so that's good. So my factors are 5x minus 2 and x minus 1. So this guy, I'll use my fast way of getting the answer. It's going to tell me that the answer is positive 2 over 5, so 2 fifths. This one is going to tell me the answer is x is positive 1. Now, those three problems are done. I've got a few more coming your way. Hang on.